Well, I said I would do another video if something came up that I thought you should hear, and uh, that's what this is about. Uh, before I start down that road, because we are going to talk about people with an ear to hear, I want to uh, just mention to you that I did complete what I said I was going to do with the, the other channel. I did. I thought it was going to be 15 to 20 short videos explaining everything that we've learned on this channel over the last year and a half. I was able to do it in seven. So it's a resource for people who want to know more about what it is that we're presenting here. When I say we, I'm not using the royal we. We as a channel, what we have learned. Because if you knew the supernaturalness of how this information came down the pike to us, it's amazing. And it's for people who go, okay, I, I, I'd like to know more about it. Seven brief videos the total running time under an hour. If you add the intro to it, tiny bit over an hour. That's for people with ears to hear who want to know more about the times that we live in because the times that we live in, we're in an emergency. We're in an emergency time. We're in the greatest time in church history since the first Pentecost, since the apostolic age. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable where we are. Second, I would, I'll, I'll leave a, a link to that channel in case you run across somebody, and that's what we're going to try and do. When you do run across somebody, you can send them to that series of videos. Also want to thank Brad at revelation12daily.blogspot.com for featuring one of my videos on his terrific site. Thank you, Brad, for that. Thank you for being awake. Brad has an ear to hear. Uh, have you ever seen the agility, canine agility competition? My sister used to be involved in that, you know, where they run the dog through an obstacle course, basically, and she would be involved in that. But you know, they took her aside and said, with you running around all this equipment, you're posing a danger to the dogs and the people in the arena. So why don't you just stay home and play fetch with your dog? But she would go for a while and do that, and there were all kinds of breeds that would participate, but not all breeds. No, 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 not all breeds. You'll never see a chow at an agility competition. I know because I used to have one. There was my boy. That's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. No, he would not go to an agility competition. He, A, wouldn't understand why he's there, and B, he ain't interested. Hey, buddy, would you, would you, would you squat down on your haunches and crawl through that tube and come out the other end? Nope. Hey, buddy, would you would you climb the ladder and slide down the plank? Nope. No, he was hard headed, and a lot of Christians are exactly like that. The difference is he was adorable. It's not adorable when Christians living in this day and age don't get it. And I look at the comments briefly on my sites, and I looked at them on Brad, and it's amazing to me. Some people still going, I'm just not sure that the sixth seal is where the church gets raptured. Well, take your time with that one. <laughs> My aching back. If there's a no-brainer in the book of Revelation, it's that one. And you can't get it. I'm glad his timing, his coming, isn't based on you getting it, because it wouldn't happen in our lifetime if it were. And a, a, and a, a whole bunch of people are going, the seventh seal is open before the sixth seal? That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, well, it didn't make any sense to me either a couple of years ago because we're imposing our Western mindset onto the scroll that Jesus takes. And I kind of now agree with uh, Donna Howell over at Skywatch TV who made a very persuasive argument that that scroll was probably a kinsman redeemer scroll. And only Jesus was qualified to take it out of the Father's hand. Regardless, it's a document. It's not a 21st century novel where chapter 23 happens after chapter 12. That's not how legal documents are written. Saying, I can't understand how the seventh seal is open before the sixth seal, is like saying, ah, so my second amendment rights to bear arms, I have to wait for the first amendment to be fulfilled before my second amendment. Do you see how silly that is? Mainly what I'm trying to tell you is, do not go in to the book of Revelation attempting to impose what you already think is true. Let it speak to you. 
Let it tell you what is going on. The fact that we saw the Revelation 12 sign tells you the seventh seal is open. So anyone who goes, oh, we're raptured before the first seal, and just brushes the entire book of Revelation then off the table. No, no reason to read it. The seventh seal is open. We saw the Revelation 12 sign. We're responsible for it. It happened on our watch. We are blessed beyond belief to have it. This is quickly becoming my favorite verse in the Bible. To the chow chows at the church of Sardis, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. There is so much in that verse. Now, let me ask you something. He's saying, if you don't watch, he wants us to watch. Now, if you're watching for the arrival of a person, will just the process of watching for their arrival give you added information? Generally not. World War II comes to an end. Uh, Mail is backed up. Telegraph offices are jammed. Information isn't getting through. The woman knows that her husband's coming home from Europe. She doesn't know when, so she goes down every day to the train station. There's one train every afternoon, and some troops get off of it, and she's there every day. Does she, and she does that faithfully. Good for her. Every day, she's there waiting, waiting for him. Is she picking up information? No, not unless something comes her way. If an officer there at the local fort walks over and says, I see you here every day. Where, 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 where was your husband stationed? In Italy? Okay, from what I understand, they're scheduled to start coming home the first of next month. Now she has information. So look at what Jesus is saying here. He's saying, what he is essentially saying is, if you watch, you will get some information that will lead you to understand the hour, the season of my coming. You will know when it's time, but you're going to have to watch because it's going to fly under the radar. It's not going to be on the front page of every newspaper. It's not going to be the lead story on the nightly news. You're going to have to watch and discern. And that's exactly how the Revelation 12 sign came. It only came to those who were watching. Mainstream church said, not interested. And even those of us who watched were left confused and dazed and some, in some cases disappointed. He's giving us another chance at it. What should have happened back in 2017, in September, on the 24th, the day after, that would have been a Sunday. The Revelation 12 sign happened on a Saturday. That Sunday, every pastor in every church around the world should have torn up his sermon notes, got into his church and said, look, we just saw a sign from God and I don't understand it. I do not for the life of me have an explanation as to how we saw something out of the 12th chapter of the book of Revelation right now, yesterday. I don't know. So that tells me what we think we know about the timeline of end time events is wrong. And we need to get in there and figure this thing out because it happened on our watch and we have the obligation to figure it out. That's what should have happened. I didn't do that. Did you do that? He's giving us another look at it. I had no idea that this whole process, this year and a half process was going to lead to the Revelation 12 sign. Shine a giant spotlight on the Revelation 12 sign, which shines a giant spotlight on the return of our Lord for his church and the end of the church age and the beginning of Israel's participation in end times. I had no idea it was going to end that way, but it did. So he's giving us another chance. And every Christian should have a chance to accept it and receive it or pass on it. Be that chow sitting by a bush with that look on your face, not interested. That's fine. But we should at least give them the opportunity to do that. It's triage time. That's the emergency we're in. Take it to everybody you know. Show it to them. If they go, I, I don't know. We're gone before the first seal even opens. I don't even know why you're... Thank you. Thank you. Take it to somebody else. Prioritize what's going on. If they don't want it, that's fine. The problem is, even the seven 
videos that I did took an hour. You know, you, you have to dedicate an hour to watch all seven. You, we can prime the pump in a much quicker amount of time. All of your Christian friends and family members should hear from you a presentation that lasts just a couple of minutes. And, and, and after you're done with that presentation, I'm going to show you how to do it here that I think is a very effective way to do it. It's on them. You do not have an obligation to get them to accept it. You do have an obligation to get them to hear about it. And, and so I want to show you a way that you can do it very easily. I actually did this with two of my sister's friends. Well, they're my friends now too, of course, but I, I did that. And it, it's a little drawing. You're going to have to, you know, get a napkin or a piece of paper. And I'm so lousy at it. One of the old crows who I was talking to said, why don't you draw with your dominant hand? And I said, I am. Oh, they're mean, nasty old women. Anyway, no, it's an effective tool. Now, you're going to have to draw a little bit, so I'm going to draw two, okay? So we're on the same page. And what I'm going to do is show you how briefly this can be done, because this is our obligation. And then our obligation ends on this matter with whoever we show this to. i got to start a timer here, online stopwatch, to see just how long it takes. So what you're going to do is you're going to tell this person, this friend, this family member, hey, can I show you something very interesting out of the seventh seal? Well, why? <laughs> We're not, we won't even be here for the seventh. Yeah, just walk past all of their objections. Yeah, okay, but let me, can I show this to you? I think you'll see it. it's very exciting. Okay. I mean, who isn't going to give you a couple of minutes? Just don't get sidetracked. Don't get into a side argument about when the rapture is. Just show them this little presentation. Let's see how long it takes. So first you say to them, in the seventh seal, there are two storylines, two event lines. We learn in the seventh seal what God has planned in end times. It begins at chapter 8 and goes through the seventh trump. We'll put it here on this line. We also see what the enemy will do. They share the seventh seal, and they share the same time and space. The enemy's story begins on at chapter 12 and goes to the seventh bowl. At the seventh trump, we are told there will be noises, lightnings, thunderings, an earthquake, and hail. At the seventh bowl of wrath, we're told there are noises, lightnings, thunderings, and earthquake, and hail, because it's the same event shown from two different perspectives. But what we want to focus on today, the very beginning of that line, the first two events on both of those lines. So let's just focus in on that. Turn the napkin over and draw two more lines. With these little spokes will represent the first two events of both of those lines the God line and the enemy line. On the God line, the first event is a half hour of silence, about a half hour of silence. That's a countdown to the next event. It's telling us there's about a half hour, relatively speaking, a very short time from the half hour of silence to the next event. The next event is a category five event. It's not going to end the world but it's certainly going to change the world. And the Holy Spirit describes that event as, and there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Very similar language to what we just saw at the seventh trump and seventh bowl of wrath. To make it even more impactful, the corresponding event to that on the enemy's line is war in heaven. At the same time that event is going to take place, there is war in heaven with Satan and his angels being thrown out of heaven and cast to earth. It's a huge moment. Our problem is, how do we know when the half hour of silence begins? Well, because the corresponding event to that is the Revelation 12 sign, which we saw in September of 2017. That ends the presentation. That's it. Because if they have an ear to hear, they're either going to say, the Revelation 12 sign already happened? Is that what you're saying? If they knew about the Revelation 12 sign, they're going to say, so you're saying that's why we saw the Revelation 12 sign in preparation to this event? What, what, what more can you tell me about this event? 
If they don't have an ear to hear, here's what they're going to say. We're gone before the seventh seal even opens. Move on. They had their opportunity. They've now had two opportunities. Here's my guess, and it's just a guess. We won't get a third. That's my guess. It's kind of been preordained. When we look at the letters to the churches seven times, we see the phrase, let him who has an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Here is what the Spirit is saying to the church right now on earth. When you see the Revelation 12 sign, you are within a half hour of his coming. The King is coming.